Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for appearing before your committee today. Mr. Chairman, I ask unanimous consent to enter into the record uh, a document from the Security Industry Association. It's Association for Cyber Security Providers. Just general knowledge uh, document. I ask unanimous consent. Without objection. So ordered. During this emerging technology era, of digital technologies, it, I think it's important uh, that we refer to technologies that we've had existing for quite some time. In 2005, as a police officer, we had, in a, the city that I patrolled, we had access to a, a, a camera that was disguised, a series of cameras that was disguised as a, as a transformer on an electric pole, where we had large numbers of uh, complaints and crimes in portions of the city, and the citizenry themselves would want this, this crime solved and investigated. And we would have the, the, the linemen for the electric company install this camera, and we would solve many crimes, and crimes would go down. This was 15 years ago. We have license plate readers right now Madam, gentlemen, I'm quite sure you're familiar with license plate readers. We use them from sea to shining sea. If your vehicle is on a public road, then it's subject to a license plate reader. In fact, these cameras are not available to just law enforcement, but any citizen, if you choose to invest a treasure, they're quite expensive. You could read the license plate, and it's cross-reference to the DMV, and they'll know exactly what vehicle passed in front of that camera. These cameras have been used to successfully investigate and solve crimes, some of them heinous crimes, crimes numbering in the scores of thousands across the country. I have in my home 11 smart cameras. These cameras are connected to software, the high-resolution digital cameras. The software interprets the imagery to determine if it's a familiar person or not. If it's a familiar person that's, that the cameras have learned is a constant visitor to my home or myself or my wife, my son, et cetera, then there's no alert sent to the security company. If it's not a familiar person, then a human being receives a prompt and looks at that camera feed to my home. These are technologies that exist and we all have. Everyone, everyone here wants to protect Fourth, Am um, Fourth Amendment rights and privacy rights of American citizenry. None of us want our constitutional protections violated. But the fact is, this, this emerging technology of facial recognition is, is coming and it's reflecting, it's reflecting just the advancement of our digital uh, technologies that we have already employed across the country but I gotta go now. and deployed in, in public areas, including airports. Fight with the R's. You're very welcome. Ms. Del Greco, like any technology, there's a chance for abuse. Would you concur? We feel that at the FBI that following policies and procedures are extremely important. Thank you. And it, these are human beings following policies and pr procedures, correct? We require all state and local, authorized state and local uh, law enforcement entities to adhere to the required training. And Thank you, ma'am. So the technologies that we're viewing, the, these, these cameras don't, they don't make arrests, do they? They just add to the, to the data of a case file or to the, the the strength of an investigation and then a human being, an investigator must follow up on that and determine if you have probable cause for arrest. Is that correct? Our system doesn't capture, capture real time. It's a probe photo has to be submitted to the NGI IPS by law enforcement and they have to have authority to access our system for a law enforcement purpose. Well, the, the concern of this, of this committee as it should be is the potential abuse of this technology. And I, I believe the point that we, should, that we should clarify in my remaining 10 seconds here is that human beings are ultimately in control of the investigative effort 
and that the technology that's viewed is, is part of a much larger totality of circumstances any, in any criminal investigation. Would you concur with that, ma'am? For the FBI, we're very strict on the use of our system and the authorities that are provided to those law enforcement entities. Thank you, Madam. Mr. Chairman, my time has expired. Yeah, what, what do you mean by strict? What does that mean? Since the last hearing in 2017, the FBI, we take this very seriously, sir. We, we went out to our advisory policy board made up of over 100 state, local, federal, and tribal entities. We talked to them about the GAO findings. We talked to them about collecting photos in, in, against the First and Fourth Amendments. We require state and local and federal and tribal entities to have training to submit a photo to the NGI IPS. We, re we restrict the access unless they're authorized to have it. We also put out the NGI policy and implementation guide, and we told the states they must follow the standards that were identified in the facial identification scientific working group standards. Mr. Clay, 